Look at all those gnats. I have to show you how happy this girl gets when she sees Forrest and Beatrix. These are the faces and the noises she makes. Every single time, oh shoot, every single time they call, she gets so excited and she laughs. She doesn't gag usually. I don't know why she's gagging right now. It's just a picture. They're not on the phone. It's just a picture. She probably thinks that they're trying to talk to her. But she gets so excited. So happy. Oh my god, it's so cute. She covers her face and she goes. <laughs> she does that. Mia. Yeah. Forrest, Beatrix. Oh my god. It'll take her a couple days, but she'll drink eight ounces. She'll drink out of her little dino cup and she'll drink all the water, which is awesome and amazing because she, for a while, she wasn't drinking hardly any water. She did prefer water over anything else, like milk, any kind of milk, cow's milk, almond milk, anything, any kind of milk. I have tried so many different milks. At one point, she did drink cow's milk, whole milk but she technically wasn't a year yet. She was like 11 months, 10 and a half, 11 months. She was drinking it, but I had to stop giving it to her. Also, when she was really little at two months, she wanted baby food. She would eat the baby food, but I had to stop giving her baby food because she wasn't technically old enough for baby food. And even food, regular table food, she would always show so much interest in when she was really, really little like just months old, but I couldn't give her what she wanted because she just was too young. And through her little tiny life, she's gone through phases of liking something and then not liking it. Like she liked sweet potato for a little while. She, would, she wouldn't have any problems eating it. She, that was really the only baby food that she would eat. She doesn't eat sweet potato anymore. And I feel like a lot of things that happen to her kind of interfere with her eating and progressing. Like when she first got her tube in, that slowed things down, I feel like. When she got her surgery, I feel like that slowed things down. But water has always been something that she seems pretty safe drinking. And everything is thickened. We got a lot more thickener. I have the thickeners in here. This is the thickener that we use for the baby. She has about, or she had about eight ounces in her cup and I used two. She loves it. <laughs> Almost four ounces she's drink from here. Oh my goodness, I do it's me over me. She loves her little bunny. <laughs> she loves all stuffed animals. <laughs> Vessels? She gets so aggressive. She's such an aggressive, affectionate one. So I made a little concoction for all the gnats because, no, I cannot believe it. It's never been this bad. It's been bad, but not this bad. This is the worst it's been. And now, look at, like, I, I don't get it, I don't, and it really makes me angry. Very angry. Yes, that bowl. Talk about that bowl. That bowl makes me very angry. And look at all these gnats. Look at all of them. That bowl must have gotten there like last night because I didn't see it yesterday. So that little mixture I made is doing absolutely nothing because they're all in this bowl. There are gnats everywhere. And I know what that's gonna turn into. I just got this. This is a rice cooker. I'm pretty sure I know who used it, but I actually I'm not that positive. But they leave it like this. Leave it like this. Absolutely no silverware. Because no one wants to clean anything. It's way harder doing it by hand. Way harder. And way more time consuming. And if you just rinse your dish after you use it and put it in the dishwasher, it would not accumulate like this. I'm most likely gonna have to get 
more sponges and literally scrub things. The baby messes with everything electronic that I have and I forgot it was this that she was messing with. And the cleaning is not going well. People who don't really have anybody to talk to, friends. I don't have any friends. I might have some internet friends, but I don't really talk to anybody online either. Like nobody. Maybe that's why it's sometimes I interact with those one humans that are online and religiously like bash people. They call them haters, trolls. Sometimes I interact with them, like keep the conversation going. I'm never mean though. I don't want to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be like them. And I'm really sarcastic. But I've always wondered with these haters, I've always wondered what what they think they're doing to the person reading it or receiving it or the person who it's directed to like what they think in their mind like what do they think so i'm gonna make a chore list i've done this before so i got distracted when i was talking yesterday about the like the hater stalker people but like i don't get it like literally who are they they're no one to to these people that they're hating on i just don't understand like what their motive is or what their goal is like what they're expecting they're typing these mean comments but then what do they think is happening on the other screen when the people read it absolutely nothing unless it's just because they just want to be seen but like the only people that have ever hurt me like with their words people like in my life that you think are supposed to be there protect you love you ones that you want approval of or and for me that would be my parents and my husband at the time as a kid i've heard a lot of things that definitely hurt my feelings also like when you deal with that type of stuff when you're young i dealt with a lot of bullying all the way up into my teen years 20s and like honestly it's just like never stopped i started doing youtube and then i had a ton on there too point is harassment and bullying has really never not been a thing in my life and these people that comment and harass who are they because i have no idea i don't know who the fuck they are i literally don't even know if these people are human they could be robots they could be fucking aliens in a spaceship i don't fucking know and i don't give a i don't give a fuck i had the stalker on snapchat and i always knew when they re-added me i always knew who i always knew that it was them i always blocked them on my snapchat even though i knew they were continuously creating accounts and adding like re-adding me like i knew that probably just to inconvenience them i don't have a lot of followers anywhere so it's really easy for me to block people and honestly i haven't even heard from that person on snapchat in a long time hopefully they got bored they want me to defend myself and like attack them but i never do that so maybe that's why they were they don't message me anymore because they're bored i feel like a little sad for people like that because i don't know i don't understand like and i want to like i want to understand what is going on that makes them so uh, like obsess over things and certain people and obsess over trying to make other people feel a certain way i've talked about how i've had like a really tough time like i've posted about having a really difficult time with my teenagers helping around the house and stuff you know i've talked about that there's instances where things that are totally unacceptable and i took their phones away right i took their phones away like right after i took their phones they want to call certain people you know and talk about things i'm not gonna like deny them to call whoever if you want to call this person that person you're more than welcome here like call them have they ever called their father no i got i guess it got around to the father because while leah was in cali visiting i get information about the dad wanting to send leah a phone and i guess because like like well if i send her a phone she can't take it away right so she'll always have a phone no matter what she needs a phone to call me like the kids need to be able to call their father if they want you know which they have never ever ever been denied calling their father ever do they talk to him often 
Absolutely not. Have they, like, throughout their lives talked to him often? Absolutely not. The communication is so minimal and has been since they were born that when they get on the phone with him, they are uncomfortable. They don't know what to say. It's a very short call. He's been completely absent more than not throughout their whole life. And when he finds out about this whole phone thing and like me taking the phone because of how, like, I'm not gonna go into detail, but it's bad. Bad enough to not wanna give them a device to play on because these devices are not to call your daddy when you wanna call your daddy or your grandma or your whatever or your mom they're literally just social devices okay they keep my kids up till like five in the morning not what they should be used for like the whole reason i'm bringing this up he wants to send them a phone i've already mentioned that i don't want my kids to have a phone right now and then another one is sent back with leah for joanna i don't want them to have a phone not right now have they always been able to use my phone whenever they want absolutely they can use it they've always have been so i express again why i don't want these kids to have phones right now so i get a message and basically it was about wanting to take legal action i want my kids to respect me and take care of responsibilities before they play on phones. Honestly, if they had a flip phone, I wouldn't care because they wouldn't be playing on it and they can literally just use it for calls. But if I don't let them have this smartphone because there's rules that I want them to follow and respect that I want them to have, I need to be taken to court over that. Some people, like who the fuck, ew, who the fuck even is he? Like no one fucking knows you. He's not close to any of his fucking kids. There's certain people you just never see sober and it's, fucking sad and gross but yet they have so much power and want to do anything to fucking like inconvenience you i don't know